Hey. Tommy, new here. First time on the vlog. I'm stoked right now. Hey guys, welcome back to another vlog. Ryan Wilson here from Predator Inc. And I know we haven't had a vlog go out this last week. I completely blame it on our cameraman, Jason. He literally has skinny legs with his skinny jeans on. Um, he needs to go to the gym. He ended up going to Disneyland and got cramps in his legs and cramps in his ankles. And I didn't even know that was a thing, but apparently it is. Uh, but lie. he's going to the gym from now on. And I think maybe Tommy can take him. I don't know. We're going to be so. doing two a days. We're neighbors. Tommy's going to wake him up at what? Five in the morning oh, to go to the gym? Five in the morning, four in the morning. Good, dude. He's probably going to kick and scream. There's probably going to be tears involved. All the excuses. Just drag him in. Be three you hours late. Introduce Tommy. Yeah. This All is right. first time on the vlog. Really? It is. No way. I'm Tommy, new here. First time on the vlog, I'm stoked right now. Tommy's from Oklahoma, so saying stoked is really hard for him to do. We got a ton of stuff going on. A lot of trucks leaving, new trucks coming in, new projects being started. I wanted to showcase this truck behind me. So this thing is just absolutely amazing. It's a 2006 Alpha Hummer with the original LOY Zero Max from AM General. It has 5,000 miles on it. It's been in a garage for many, many years in a collection. New owner bought it and send it out here with a bunch of Tommy. That's loud, you're mic'd up. Sorry. <laughs> no, continue working, man. Jason, you, can't you wait. You. So, <laughs> it's a 2005 Duramax. It literally, fuck, 2005? How'd I come up with that? It's the 5,000 miles. Yeah. 2006 Duramax Alpha H1 Hummer. Probably one of the rarest trucks out there because it only has 5,000 original miles sat in a garage in a collection for many, many years until this new owner bought it. We're doing roof rack, light bar, and braking system. What else are we doing? Give plates and the shocks. So with steps on there, I think? Yes. Okay, and then some shocks. Unfortunately though, the shocks, we're dealing with another coronavirus dilemma. On back order from Fox for about six months now. I think it's six months now that we've been waiting for shocks to come in. They're telling us now that they're fulfilling all those old orders from six months ago. Hopefully they're coming in soon. We're installing our big brake kit on it today. So we've got our six piston calipers right here. They're all taped up. We protect them, get them all taped up before they go in. All of this stuff is all manufactured in house. Build aluminum hats here, as well as bedded rotors. So these things are just really, really cool. If you take a look at that, that kind of looks like a used rotor. And in fact, we've had customers and they're like, hey, you sent me used rotors. I'm like, no, we actually upgraded the system to bedded rotor. It's a heat treating process on there that really kind of sets this above and beyond what's necessary for the truck, but really nice little upgrade. The hangers for the calipers right here, Tommy's installing right now, it's all billet steel. Actually, we're in a production run right now uh, over here. Come on over here. Josh actually just left for lunch. But um, this is what we're doing. So these are the, the caliper mounts. These are the hangers for the caliper. And it starts with, let's see this guy right here. This thing weighs probably like maybe three pounds or so. But it starts with this guy that weighs probably 25 pounds of billet steel. So we turn that down and literally into this guy. So you can see how much of this material is gone and machined off of here. We have about an hour runtime just to produce this on the mill, just one of these. So we've got four hours of machine time just for a set of hangers. And you can see the setup here. We've got a, a new block of the billet steel here. And once it's done machining out the top section here on this side, then it flips into op two, and then it goes into op three for the drilling and tapping of the mounts for the, the caliper. Probably be running the mill for about a week and a half on just knocking out the hangers. Then we're gonna go to the hats. We have enough hats to fulfill all our orders right now, but we're getting low. So we're machining these guys out. This will bolt up to obviously the H1 uh, diff and the, uh, 
uh, bolt pattern for the flange. Uh, 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 I, I was looking for words, man. They're big words, flange. All right, so we got the, the rear brakes in place. Tommy got that knocked out yesterday. We'll take a look underneath there. Here's another system that's getting installed next week, I believe. And so we've got the mount here. You can see this, this thick half inch steel hanger, the diff bolts into, and then we have the e-brake system up here. Six piston caliper is gonna sit back here, and then obviously the rotor. But we'll show you that on the vehicle. We already have it installed. Before we have the differential, the brackets, and all the components on the table, we usually start by assembling the full cradle, the mounts, everything on the table, then disassemble it. We take the rotors and the calipers out, put it up in the vehicle, four bolts front and back, and then from there, we slide in the rotors with the calipers. Keep the axles out for more direct install once the vehicle is on the ground, then we go ahead and shove them back in. So for now, we're just going to do one bolt to hold the rotor in place. I'm just gonna run this down. So that one bolt keeps the rotor there as if the axle shaft was in place. Of course, beforehand, I put a little bit of Loctite on these bolts. Don't want those backing out. So how do you like working at Predator? It's great, something new every day, except for gotta deal with you. Out here trying to do some work with a camera on my face. I'll be known as the big brake guy. <laughs> so now that the calipers and rotors are in, all we gotta do is hook up the brake lines, get it on the ground, get the half shafts in with all new hardware, get everything torqued down. And then from there, we gotta bleed the brakes and we're all done. Ah, damn. It's a full moon. Damn, you had ass and two Just ass, ass and shafts everywhere around here. <laughs> we'll get back to work. Thanks, Tommy. Who are you telling me to work? You get back to work. How about you get to work on time? Can we hold it? Okay. You're the star. Jared's the star. Oh, what's up, Jared? Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> Jared said, what's up, guys? Here, take the light. I just, <laughs> dude, are you serious? I just asked you, hey, hand me the light. And you're like, no, I'm holding the light for you. I and that weird voice. I mean, All what right. are you talking about? Brakes, bro. We're talking about brakes. Stop yelling in my ear. Uh, All right. You ready? Yeah. Welcome to today's vlog. <laughs> okay, so rear brakes are in place. So this is the obviously the, the tougher setup when we engineered this system. And actually, we engineered this system not for the civilian marketplace, but for the military. So when we made that push from Iraq into Afghanistan, SOCOM came to us and said, hey, we got a serious problem because these trucks are going into Afghanistan. They were never designed to, to do mountainous terrain with all this armament. And if you recall, going through the whole Iraq war, these trucks came into to combat with no armament at all. And then all of a sudden they went from roughly 5,000, 6,000 pound vehicles all the way up to 12, 15,000 pound vehicles with all the armament kits that were going on there, turrets and so forth. And what happened was the brakes weren't able to hold up under the mountainous terrain. So when we were coming down through uh, some passes, trucks were overheating, the brakes were overheating specifically, the uh, brake fluid was boiling over and it would uh, spill out in the engine bay, catch fire. As you know, brake fluid is flammable. Um, I wanna say it's around 300 degrees or so. Uh, stuff will catch fire and the whole truck loses brake pressure, meaning you lost all your brakes you're going downhill out of control on fire. So uh, there are a couple of horrific accidents that happened with that. SOCOM came to us and said, hey, we need a solution, you gotta help us out. And this is a system that we developed for SOCOM. So we ran this system 
for, um, and actually Jason, throw up the video we have online, an up-armored Humvee, and you can see how much better it breaks. amazing system. So we ran this system on a bunch of SOCOM vehicles for a lot of special forces groups. And then eventually, a few years later, we adapted it over to the civilian marketplace. And this is what we have here now. So as you can see, this hanger here is massive, half inch plate steel, fully welded in place and machined out in-house. We do all the stuff in-house here. And then the six piston calipers, now the rotors here are 12 inch, actually they're a little bit over, they're almost like 12 and a half, 13 inch rotors. So just a little bit bigger than the original Alpha rotors at 12 inches, or if you have uh, some of the older 998 Humvees or like a 1998 Hummer, those are the 10K brake system, which are 10 inch rotors on there. So big difference going to 12 inch rotors, but we're oversized from that. Unfortunately, we can't go much bigger than that because obviously it'd be hanging down here um, in line with, you know, obviously whatever you're traversing over. So you can't do that. So this is a, uh, as big as we could possibly go, but the rotor has a lot more material. It's literally like twice the weight of the original rotor. Uh, the thickness is about, uh, probably about 60, 70% thicker than the original rotor, fully ventilated. And you can see how massive these vents are. So there's a lot of rotors out there that are primarily for looks. They, they look cool, they look like they're ventilated very well, but they're really not. Um, this is truly designed to suck air through these vents here, keeping it cool and, um, and, and effectively braking so you don't have that brake fade. Uh, that's a common term that we say out here in this, in this industry is brake fade. And what happens is when these brakes start to get really warm, they start to get soft. So you may have noticed if you've ever done a um, driven like a race car or a higher performance car, or maybe even just like your Suburban coming down a hill or an H1, um, the brakes start to feel a little bit soft, that's brake fade. So this system is designed not to have that brake fade because it's designed to keep the temperatures under control. So a lot of technology went into this. Um, I think we had probably uh, four months fast tracking it. Maybe it was three months fast tracking the whole brake system for SOCOM. We spent a lot of time, literally made this our, our main effort to get this thing, um, all the R&D done and getting it implemented for them. So got that done and then eventually transitioned it over to the H1 Hummer. So this is hands down the best of the best braking system out there. Brakes are in place on this Alpha here and they're getting the front ones wrapped up. What we'll do is we'll get this thing back down on the ground tomorrow. We've got rocker panel protection going in place. You can see over here, let me turn this light a little bit. The rocker panel protection is off the truck right now. So we have new ones going on, which are a lot stronger than the factory stuff. They're steel construction instead of the aluminum. On top of that, there's some angles on the side that gives it a lot of protection there, especially for side impact. So that's coming down tomorrow. We'll get those on and then we'll give you a full walk around on the truck. It's a pretty amazing truck having just 5,000 miles on this thing. It's absolutely beautiful underneath here. Just walking around, you can see how clean it is. But um, yeah, that uh, kind of wraps it up for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you some other day. How do you like not seeing me, Ryan, since I'm hiding behind the tire? It's actually kind of nice. So Jason's completely behind the tire and all I see is the camera, which works out very well. I don't have Jason going hey, weird hand signals that mean, <laughs> I don't know what, smoke signals. Okay, just so you guys can see what I'm looking at, it looks a lot better like this because you can't see Jason, but you can see his little skinny legs right there. So take a look at this. <laughs> <laughs>